Greetings, YouTube, and welcome to The Rabbit Hole. I always enjoy learning about the origins of modern-day traditions. Folklore is an essential part of defining who we are as a society and as a culture, and when we lose those stories to censorship because the topic has become taboo, or the narrative has been retold to suit corporate interests, we lose a connection to our past, our ancestors, and our community. One of my favorite examples of such folklore is the origin story of Santa Claus. Get your boots and jackets on, because we're going on a trip. Ho ho ho! Follow me down. Santa Claus, as we have come to know him, was invented by Clement Clark Moore, who wrote A Visit from St. Nicholas in 1822. The now famous poem better recognized as Twas the Night Before Christmas, focuses on Saint Nicholas of Myra, who was known for bringing about miracles, earning him the nickname Nicholas the Wonder Worker. He was also the patron saint of children and famous for secretly giving out gifts. A direct connection between Saint Nicholas and Santa Claus can be seen. However, the more magical or fanciful specifics of Moore's poem like the flying reindeer, are less obvious. Please note, while Moore's poem which was published in 1823 is credited as the original source to mention Santa's eight flying reindeer, this illustration, published in 1821 depicts Santa's sleigh pulled by a single reindeer. These fantastical details have led investigators like John Rush and Carl Ruck to hypothesize that Moore was inspired by Northern European motifs which derive from Siberian or Arctic shamanic tradition. Here are five connections between today's Santa Claus and ancient winter solstice traditions involving the Amanita muscaria mushroom. Follow me down. Number one, gifts beneath the Christmas tree. The tradition of putting gifts under a coniferous tree stems from the shamanic tradition of ingesting Amanita muscaria mushrooms during the winter solstice. The mushroom grows almost exclusively beneath these types of trees in nature and has a mycorrhizal relationship with them. In Siberian or Arctic traditions, the mushrooms beneath the tree were revered as presents or gifts of the most sacred nature. Number 2. Reindeer Reindeer are common in Siberia and have a close relationship with Siberian shaman. Very close, in fact. These species of deer often eat Amanita muscaria mushrooms, causing pleasant intoxication. While reindeer can digest the mushroom without harm, the fungi are technically toxic for human consumption. Although toxicity can vary greatly with geographic location, the environment in which they are grown, and even the season in which they are harvested. That being said, there are not many fatalities connected to the ingestion of Amanita muscaria, and in the small number of cases that do exist, reports were poorly documented or suggest that death occurred from indirect causes related to taking Amanita muscaria rather than from toxicity from the mushroom itself. To play it safe, however, reindeer herders and shamans across Europe and Asia have a long-standing tradition of collecting reindeer urine and then drinking it to safely ingest the hallucinogen. While the kidneys filter out the majority of toxic chemicals, the active ingredients, ibotenic acid and muscomol, are not metabolized and thus able to be excreted. In other cases, such as in the Koryak tribe, an indigenous people of the Russian Far East, a shaman would ingest the mushrooms, collect his urine, and then give it to the others to drink and hallucinate from. This filtration process can happen approximately seven times before the active ingredients begin to lose potency. Many in these regions have reported that after ingesting the mushroom and then stepping outside to urinate, reindeer who smell the active ingredients in the participant's urine have approached to drink their pee. Amongst the Siberian shamans, you have an animal spirit you can journey with in your vision quest, and reindeer are common and familiar to people in eastern Siberia, says Karl Ruck. Here we get the idea of reindeer journeying as they do in our Christmas tradition. The reindeer have also been observed jumping while intoxicated, as if they were attempting to fly. Additionally, 
many people hallucinating under the influence of the mushroom have described the feeling of flying, which they conclude the reindeer must feel as well. And finally, some under the mushroom's spell have hallucinated that the reindeer themselves are flying across the frozen night sky. Thus, the inspiration for Santa's sleigh pulled by reindeer from a northern celestial sphere. Ho ho ho! Number 3. Stockings hung by the chimney with care. After Amanita muscaria mushrooms are collected, they are usually dried before eaten. One way this was accomplished was by hanging them in socks over the fire, much like today's tradition of putting gifts in stockings over the fireplace. Number 4. Down the Chimney Moore's poem says, Down the chimney St. Nicholas came with a bound, which seems like a rather odd way to make an entrance, and a very specific detail for the poet to originate. And that is because it is not original to Moore's poem. This type of entrance derives from how many shamans in Siberian and Arctic cultures would enter their clan members' abodes. During the winter, snow would often be piled so high that the main entrance to the yurt or teepee-like dwelling would be covered. So to get inside and deliver the mushrooms, the shaman would climb up to the smoke hole and drop down. Hence, St. Nick's unique entrance. Number 5. Santa's Look Santa's bold red and white clothes are reflective of the Amanita muscaria mushroom itself. Siberian shamans dressed in clothes mimicking their sacred fungi. After participants ingested the substance, they often hallucinated the shaman himself turning into the magical mushroom. And for that pudge we associate with Jolly St. Nick, shamans were rewarded with lots of food after delivering the gift of Amanita muscaria on a cold winter night in a tradition similar to leaving out milk and cookies for Santa Claus. There are many more connections between today's Christmas traditions and mushrooms beyond what I have mentioned here, so I encourage you to keep digging on your own. Entheogens have played an influential role in the history of religion and folklore, but in an attempt to control the masses, these substances for the most part have been made illegal. The once revered shaman is now demonized and discredited. Institutional religion has taken mystical experience away from the individual and handed them a placebo. Interestingly, Amanita muscaria is legal in most countries around the world. Perhaps this is because of the side effects the mushrooms produce, which are not always pleasant. Nevertheless, with proper research and preparation, Amanita muscaria can be rewarding. Entheogens are a necessary step for self-discovery. They are a bridge to our folklore, history, and ancestors. Thank you for watching and for continuing to fight to bring an end to the war on drugs through research, data, and the sharing of knowledge. Until next time, keep digging.